changer for for you in terms of your career? Like, can you do you think like the kind of roles because you kind of it, like after I Zombie, it was Bly uh, for yeah. you and uh, same year. So, yeah. so do you do you think I Zombie changed things for you? Oh, dude, I Zombie saved my life. Um, I so I went to drama school. But I went to an amateur drama school. Um, shout out to the Questers Theatre in Ealing. Um, but that's that's where, like, I I saw Star Wars as a kid. I was like, I want to be in Star Wars. What the fuck do I do? <laughs> and that's it, right? And I was I was at eleven or twelve, and I it just became my obsession. And um, I didn't know you liked Star Wars. You like <laughs> I, a tiny bit. Just that I'm like, it's you know, it's on my IMDb trivia. Um, but uh, but yeah, like. I didn't know how or what, where my role would be in Star Wars. I just knew that I needed to be a part of it. And initially it was going to be um, special effects. So I got into production. And so I was going to like um, this college that was terrible that said they did this media production course. And within about three weeks, I lost faith in them. And I was like, oh, fuck, this is awful. Um, but I was making short film for the for the for the assignments, and in that I ended up being in one of my short films, and I was like, "Oh, well, you're better at this, and you have more fun with this." So I dropped out of that, joined that theatre school. Mm. Uh, so I got out at I was 20, 20, 20 years old, twenty one years old, and then nothing until I zombie. And in that period, I was auditioning a lot. Uh, in London um, and those same fucking sterile rooms just, and it was like three, four times a week. Uh, if it was a commercial, I was DiCaprio. I think other people were afraid of me. So I was like the Enviraphone dude and Champions League and Subway <laughs> and PlayStation and fucking, what, I don't know, Rubicon Mango Juice. Here um, he comes. We might as well leave. Yeah, He's exactly. Now, he, I don't know he, what that was about. I was on fire <laughs> when it came to that. Give me, you know, uh, a BBC drama, nothing. And so it took me uh, until I was about 26. It took me about five years of solidly auditioning um, to get a line. And even then, I think it was cut. It was on a Channel 4 drama and it was cut and then eventually i got holby city hmm. and i was like i'm fucking speaking on camera <laughs> uh, and that was like a big celebration and then it was eastenders again like three lines i was the manager of the chicken shop and i fired shirley um that was my career and i you know now i'm 27 and it's it's like me doing <laughs> you, yeah. like you're not this isn't the the, the, the game changer you thought it would be and i got very close to quitting man i was super like i was disenfranchised and felt that i don't want to do this for another few years um i'm gonna die like i cannot afford to do any this is killing me and it's killing my future um and i, I remember having a conversation with my then agent after a really bad audition where i think i was i was just treated extra mean that day i was i was already part of the cattle call but that one felt like even even more kind Treated of gross. mean like as in just not given the time of day or actually spoken to like badly both. both it was it was a bit of both and it's super common man like one day i'm gonna play one of these guys that you know has a budget for some fucking crappy bbc show <laughs> and thinks that they're james cameron mm. And they're so dismissive and just so, uh, and they feel like the it's minute weird. you walk in, you feel yeah. like they, they, you, they already have the attitude of you've wasted my time mm -hmm. and we haven't even done the scene yet. That's the energy of the room. Isn't it, isn't it weird? Like I, I've met people like that in the industry, like mm. who, who somehow feel that they have to play that, like their small bit, the small bit of power they've been granted allows them to live out this fantasy of, of being this big shot, like mm. and, and acting, like, you know, like they've got three Oscars in a cabinet at home. And you you, you just sort of go, well, just why? It's always yeah. puzzled me. You sort of end up just going, by why? What, what is the point? Who is gaining from this? Like, I mean, what, what, how fragile is your ego? And why, why do you feel the need to just like be that person? I've never understood it. It's, it's usually, I mean, you nailed it, man. It's because they haven't got three Oscars and the mm. little bit of power 
kind of it's so even i've met badly behaved actors and they're usually the ones who aren't really doing shit and yeah, you're like they'll come in on yeah. your show as a guest and you're like yo why the fuck are you talking to our crew like that <laughs> like and then you'll get giants like you'll meet giants and mm. carla gugino for instance mm. right it's yeah. carla gugino uh, uh, like i saw her, i was like uh sin city watchman like and also she was one of my first crushes from the bon jovi video <laughs> she is the nicest human in the world there's a reason why she works so often there's a reason why she's in gunpowder milkshake and stuff like and she still continues to to work with with the biggest and the best it's because she's fucking great and she's great to work with she doesn't have like there's nothing then you meet someone who, you know, has been a guest on a few things, maybe had a bit of this, or maybe a few years ago was in a procedural asshole. Yeah. And you're like, huh, it's because they don't have that success. So it's like they use this as a way of this little power to kind of bully a set around or, mm. or puff their chest out. I think, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's, there's also that thing where I, I think sometimes, I don't know whether it's them or their PRs or someone's got it wrong somewhere down the line and they think to make themselves seem like a big star or bigger than potentially they are they have to act like a diva uh you know i've encountered it and it's uh yeah you're right you sort of unfortunately you do catalog that and it's very you know you meet people so sporadically that you end up going well that is what i think of them yeah, until absolutely. i and uh, even when i meet them again but, but the, uh, go on. oh sorry you know i was just say the energy that those 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 people would give off for like the crappiest commercial or just like <laughs> you know it, it it, it 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 got to me, and then like it was a Friday, and I called. I remember I called my agent. I was like, I don't want to fucking do this anymore. I was like close to tears. It's just you, that's how you spend your week, mm. and and um and they they said to me, uh, all right, cool. Um, <laughs> we have an audition for you. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> all right, mate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's so I, you know. It must be a weird thing because you have this relationship with an agent, and you know you do sort of want a little bit of a, a bit of a hug, uh, like yeah. A, 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 you're gonna, a little... you, they know you're coming back on Monday. <laughs> yeah. They know you're in it now. This is X Factor. They know this is your dreams, and you know, like <laughs> they just want. I just want to vent, and them. To, I want them to beg me to stay on yeah. their books. That's and all. You just, you just want to live through like a, a little montage moment with maybe Sigur Ross playing in the background, and just yeah, like exactly, yeah. So. That that conversation ended up just them going, uh, we got a pilot for you called I Zombie uh, for Monday morning. Uh, and I was like, okay, sounds terrible. The fuck's an I Zombie? <laughs> and then um, crammed that weekend just out of pure frustration. And then on the Monday, I went in and read for it. And I remember the cast director sat back and was like, how long have you been acting? And, and I was like, I don't know, I think eight years, nine years now. And she was like, how come you've never where where have you been and i was like i knew it yeah where have i been why why is it taking me this long to get like a speak i can act I, like i'm i'm okay at what i do you know i'm not great but you know I'm, I'm learning and dude within a week they had cast me as one of the leads uh wow. Rob thomas saw the tape and just was like it bypassed all um screen tests network tests network approval um i was just flown in did you that, I mean, that's amazing. Did you think after you did the audition, did you go, yeah, I think I nailed that before yeah. she said, uh, that, so you knew there and there. I remember like, knowing that the, the, I remember knowing that I had a, an interesting take on it. That was like, I felt good about it. It felt, mm. it felt good to just do the scene at home. So I knew that I was, I was actually looking forward to performing it, which is, you know, a good bit of advice for people. Like, yeah, I was excited. I was like, I can't wait for people to see this. I think I've put some work in. And I, I remember the, the brief for the character said, highly caffeinated. Uh, Scotty from Star Trek, highly caffeinated. And I, um, this kind of, this, this weird twist of fate, what happened. So I would, I knew how to do this scene at a million miles per minute, uh, sticking to the brief, right? And then as I got closer and closer on the tube, outside, I was having a quick smoke before I went in. I start thinking, ah, you know what? It's a bit much, right? That's a bit too broad. It's a bit too cartoonish. I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to bring it back. I don't want to twist, tw trip up on my words. Um, 
And then where I sat in the waiting room, I could see the assistant, Carson Director's assistant's um, iMac. And she was cutting together other auditions. So I could see all the dudes who had been in before me for Ravi on the screen. Cause I just, where I happened to be sitting, I could see a screen and I didn't feel like any of them were moving. Cause even though I didn't have sound, I could tell from their energy. I was like, oh, none of them are highly caffeinated. None of them did the, did the thing that it says in bold on the casting thing. Mm. So that empowered me to go, no, fuck it. Do what you said you do, do it. I go in there and just, it's big. And I'm like, da, 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 da. And, I, and then within, yeah, like I said, within a week. So I just stuck to it. I stuck to my instincts. I followed the brief and it changed my life. It saved my life, man. And, and yeah, as soon as it ended, 